This video is a continuation of another video that dealt with objects also available on our channel. We will discuss object literals and we will walk through an example where we would build an object. We will also discuss why it's a good idea to think of objects as being built by references. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. What do we mean by objects being built by references? Well, in this case we have a variable Bob which contains an object. But in fact, what really happens in memory is a bit more complicated than that. It turns out that Bob, which is a variable at an address somewhere in memory, would contain a value there. But in fact, the value that it would contain would be just a reference to another memory location where the actual object would be stored. And even if we go to that memory location, it doesn't necessarily mean that all of the properties and all of the values of that object will in fact be stored at that location. They can in turn be stored at other locations. So we can have references within the object that point to other values in memory. Now how the actual JavaScript engines implement this doesn't matter. They do it in more complicated ways than what is shown on the diagram. But having this as a visual model would be real useful to you because objects behave differently than primitives. And we will be discussing all of this later on in the course. It is useful to think of an object as an entity which houses key value pairs, one of them or many of them. And in this case, the key value pairs would not be too dissimilar to what happens at a regular variable. Now, remember how variables were defined. We would have an address in memory and then we would allocate some space in memory for the value that would be associated there. Now the space in memory would be filled with machine readable binary code. And what we would tend to write in our program would be human readable. For example, we would have, let's say, an identifier num1 and then a corresponding value, let's say the number 40. In this case, num1 would simply correspond to the address and the number would correspond to the bits which would be allocated in memory. So this is how variables work. Using the various mental models that we've shown before, we can think of a variable as some kind of a shelf which has a name associated with it and then a value on top of it. Now, what is important for us to realize is that objects are not too dissimilar from this. The main difference is that they house these key value pairs in a bigger scale object. So if we will take this num140 pair, we can in fact very easily place it inside of an object. In this case, we would use curly braces. Num1 would be the key. 40 would be the value. Num1 and 40 would be the key value pair. And then the way we would define this in code would be using the object literal notation where we simply use curly brackets around the code. So using the object literal is a convenient way to describe an object in human readable code and we would very often do this. Now there is more than one way of defining objects but this is probably the most common one you would encounter. Once we have defined an object literal we can build an object in memory. Now we would let JavaScript do this for us in the background. The way I like to visualize objects is as bookshelves. And notice what happens here. We have a num140 pair, which is shown with a yellow background, but we have another shelf here, one called proto with an object prototype property there. Now, this has to do with inheritance, and we are not ready to be discussing this yet, but keep in mind that there is more to objects than just the key value pairs that we put in. There is additional stuff there that gives us a lot of power, which makes these uh, features very useful. Now, if we would run the entire line of code, let obj1 equals to the object literal, we would define a variable called obj1, and then the object would become its value. So notice objects are values. They can be copied, they can be manipulated. We can do all sorts of things with them as we can with other values, although there are subtle differences. The key thing about using an object literal is that it allows us to define 
a number of key value pairs quite easily at the same time. So in this case, we have a single key value pair, num1 colon 40. Now, let us say just a couple of more words about what we are actually putting in here. Num1 by definition is a string. So there are two types of keys we can add in an object. One of them is a string. The other one is a symbol. Remember when we talked about symbols in a previous lecture? Well, because keys in the vast majority of cases would be strings, we are not expected to use single or double quotes to define num1 as a string. Although if you do this, JavaScript would not complain. You're in fact allowed to put in strings around the num1 identifier there. And then we would have the column and the value which would immediately follow the column. If we want to add more than one key value pair, we would then use a comma and then we would use a second line. Typically, we would place the key value pairs on separate lines and it is a good idea to have them indented so that everything becomes a lot more readable. So now we have added a second key value pair, num2 and 50. And notice if you would look on the right hand side, you would see that our bookshelf got bigger. So we added a shelf in the middle. We are not limited to only adding numbers to objects and we can in fact add anything. So right now we have added a new shelf, string one, which has a string on it. The string is John. And we can in fact even add objects as values of object properties. So now we have added a new object, which is the value of one of the key value pairs inside of the object. And what makes objects especially useful is because we can add functions there. So right now we have added a function called do something as an additional shelf in this bookshelf metaphor. You would see that the function is shown as a box with a handle on it. Now the handle in this case is meant to represent the fact that functions in JavaScript are first class values. We can pass them around, we can manipulate them. They are in fact objects. We will talk about functions a whole lot later on in the course. But be aware for now that very often we would want to place functions inside of objects. They are the methods which we will be using on them. And very often these methods would be operating on the types of values which are also stored in the object. So if we call one of these methods, the way we do this is we would use the name of the object followed by a dot followed by the name of the function. We can in fact invoke this method, we can run some code and then we can get a value back. Another way of visualizing this is we are in fact going to the box, executing it, getting a value back and then returning back to the calling location.